Hi, um, I'm Tim. I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Steve and Nancy. Thank you, Tim. Uh, I'm Tim. I'm an alcoholic. Uh, sobriety date is March 3rd, 2009. And um, come from a place where, not going to get like too deep into it, but um, I was a shy person and all I wanted was a family that I was separated from at 15. And it was one of those ideals where my mom considered herself a, a God-fearing woman. And it, if I wasn't on her path, then I was automatically like sentenced to hell. And it was one of those deals where I was separated at 15 with a check twice a month. Um, and it just like gave me a big hit that I was different, I was better than, and I had like no worries, you know, because as long as I didn't show up to my mom's house, there's a check. And if I needed a bigger check, it was like, mom, I'm coming over tonight at six. Oh, no, 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 tonight's a bad time. I'm going to send you something. That went on from the age of like 15 to, to like, what, 30, 38, 39. Um, and it was like, I, I always thought that I had life like right here. I got introduced to, to like alcohol by my twin brother. Um, he had this deal where he was gonna like show me how to be street smart. And it started off with um, can of beer and that didn't work. And it was like, no, just just keep trying to take sips. Just, just do it slowly. And I had a real heavy stutter, so I couldn't talk. And I couldn't drink like he wanted me to. And then my mom, like, um, divorced and remarried this guy. He moved us to Southern California. That's when I, just, I was introduced to, like, outside issues. And those, like, outside issues didn't know what an outside issue was because every woman or a, a lot of women had a bottle of diet pills. Back then, didn't know what diet pills were, but they got me going. They got me going. It took the stutter away, mm -hmm. but I couldn't tell people that that's how the stutter went away because, you know, it wasn't supposed to be taken. Um, and it went on to where I kept doing that um, someone said, Tim, if beer makes you sick right away, bypass that and just go like straight to something hard. That's when I was introduced to like shots of tequila. But mind you, I was a type one diabetic. And so my day started like, okay, I have to take this insulin. It's going to hype me up, but I also have to eat. And if I do this outside issue, take insulin, try to eat, eating is going to take away from this outside issue, and then I'm going to need something to like wash it down. And it, it was like, my body was like so unpredictable. And like I said, it was one of those deals where I spent like maybe a very long time trying to like get ready for the day, like take a shower, get dressed, trying to look like perfect. But I never made it out of the house, you know, because uh, <laughs> insulin works. <laughs> it was like, oh, well, I have to eat. And those like little packs of like square crackers, it'll take me at least a couple hours <laughs> to eat one cracker, you know, because it was like, <sighs> that's how I thought I was getting away with something. And like mm -hmm. fast forward, um, I learned that that if I like drank more to start off, that would like curb my appetite and there's like sugar and alcohol. So wow, have a couple of shots of tequila, then I could take an insulin shot mm -hmm. because I got sugar. <laughs> I, I won't have a like, uh, <laughs> I, I won't have a seizure then. And I did that for, for like many, 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 many of years. Uh, when I finally made it to, to Seattle, um, didn't want to be here. I was downtown LA and I thought someone was chasing me. 
So I thought, you know, there's a Greyhound station. I'll go in there. All I saw was like destinations. I saw Washington, but I saw Washington. So I think it's in Washington, D.C. That's where I'm going. Soul Brothers going to be a politician. <laughs> but, but it was Seattle, Washington. And I ended up like downtown, maybe 9th and Stewart. And I just started walking, ended up on like Broadway and Pine. And I saw people with like QSC bags. And I'm like, y'all folks really like chicken here. I thought I was seeing like KFC. <laughs> and I was like, wow, you guys, whoa, they're all into chicken here. <laughs> and for a long time, that's where my thinking went. You know, I should have been wearing glasses. I wasn't wearing them. Uh, I should have been like taking better, better care of my health. Uh, of my health, I wasn't doing it. When I was introduced to the program, I came in like wearing masks. I had multiple masks. I was wearing one. I had some in my backpack, and I thought I was gonna like paint a picture that you got all. Everyone's gonna believe that I'm good. I'm a strong, sober brother. I got this feel, but I never had anything. And it got, um, it finally got to the point where I was hearing stories like, Tim, the show's over with. Get off the stage, you know? Tim, you're gonna die. Uh, and it just so happened, I still didn't believe it. And one of the biggest deals I did, the last relapse that I was about to take, um, I stole from someone. And it was one of those deals where my punishment for me was like, you have to die. And it was something that I've never, I've never raised my hand and asked anyone for help. I raised my hand thinking that they're going to judge me. They're going to talk about me. So it was like the next, my next indicated thing to do was I have to jump. I have to jump off the Deacon Bridge. And I remember like walking to the bridge <clears throat> and the only words that I heard was like, I, it was a woman's voice saying like, don't leave five minutes before the miracle happens. Mm -hmm. And my eyes opened up and I was at Swedish Hospital and it was like, people were like still asking me like, what did you drink? What kind of drugs did you take? I was still like, still lying. Be like, Shh. I mean, I'm sober. Why are you gonna ask me a question like that? I'm a sober person. They discharged me. They discharged me on a Saturday morning. I was part of this, this group or like this family called these two people the closest person to me. Every Saturday morning we had, um, we went to a morning meeting, PPP, and then back to their house, had a pancake breakfast. That Saturday morning, I went knocking on the door. I was very hungry, and I wanted pancakes. I knocked on the door. One of them opened the door. I thought I was going to walk in. They stopped me. They're like, Tim, you're not welcome there. And... Um, uh, and I felt the same way I felt at the age of 15 when my mom was like, you take this, you'll keep getting these envelopes just as long as you don't come back here. That's the feeling that I felt. And I finally realized that I really have to get honest now. I really have to do something. And by the grace of a, of a loving God, I said, yes, I'll accept your help. Hour later, they were taking me to the airport. We sat at the airport for a little over like two hours for the next plane to fly out to California. I got sober in California and I stayed there for like three years. I finally got the courage to come back and make that one amends. And ever since then, like life has been taken off just as long as I keep doing the things that you guys show me. You know? By example, I don't I don't see I don't take everything that people put down, but I do like take 
what I believe will work for me. In the last 15 years, the things that have been working for me, um, I, I, it feels like I'm lying about what I'm about to say. I don't lie anymore, <laughs> you know? Um, I tell the truth. I keep no secrets. And it's one of those deals where it brings me freedom and like things are still like happening for me. There's a time where I was the diabetes I don't have that anymore. I have a transplant. When they told me, like, Tim, okay, uh, your kidneys are, they're gone. You have to do dialysis. You got to a point where dialysis wasn't working. They were talking, um, Tim, you might want to get your, your affairs in order. I had to go to Swedish to, like, sign the discharge paperwork. But I had to bring someone with me. I took Peter. And we're in the office. Social worker was like, can you call your brothers? They both said, like, no, I don't want scars on my body. And the first time Peter heard the words that, that the that he witnessed that I was giving up. I chose to die because I still thought that this is too deep to ask another person to support me. And Peter like stood up with me and he's been by my side ever since then. And it's one of those deals where like his, his experience, strength and hope, love and kindness and all that, there's like no strings to it. But my thinking is, what has like so freely given to me, I have to pass it on. You know, I have to. And it's one of those deals where um, people know me, people know me doing service work as a, as a giver. I walk down streets on Capitol Hill, houseless people, they're, they're like, hey, Tim. Or people are like, hey, aren't you? I think you gave me my first big book. <laughs> I'm thinking anonymity. Uh, hello, we're at QOC right now. And they're like, Tim, you played a big part in my life. Recently, I got a new sponsee because they didn't believe that they were getting what they needed from <coughs> someone that, that would laugh at them or and, and like judge them. I was like, dude, that's not what it's all about. You have choices just like so, and countless other people have, we have choices. If it's not working for you, you have to speak up. So, we got a new sponsor. And like now, I can honestly say that I do work a program. I do pay things forward. Last year, um, stuck in my apartment, Steve was on this gratitude banquet deal. He asked me to speak. I spoke. The next year, needed people to do service work and set up. I was like, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to be around people. I'm going to show up early, do service work, and go home before <laughs> people should show up. <laughs> Steve was like, Tim, you're, you're, oh, sorry, you're MC. MC. Yeah, you're MC. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. But, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful because the way I think and I feel sometimes, is like totally false. And just as long as I keep doing the things that you guys and countless other folks are showing me, my example, most of the time, I'm still here, I'm still sober, and I will stop right there. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.